Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this bond fact sheet. Now, like I said, this is Vanguard. Um, they are an index fund, and we're gonna read through some of this information so that you are better able to make some choices when it is time for you to invest. Now, as long as you get just a basic understanding of what's going on with this worksheet, you don't have to totally understand everything. Even I don't totally understand everything, but there are a few things that you do want to look at. Now, I am going to th read through the product summary because there is some important information in there and I'll talk about it with you. Notice that we are on the overview page. It says product summary. This fund is designed to provide broad exposure to U.S. investment grade bonds. That means this fund is made to give you a lot of different options at the same time. Reflecting this goal, the fund invests about 30% in corporate bonds and 70% in U.S. government bonds of all maturities. What that means is if they have $100, they put $30 into businesses, corporate bonds, and they put $70 into the U.S. government. Now, all maturities means sometimes you can buy bonds for like a couple months. Intermediate means you can buy them for a year or two. Long-term means you can buy them for like 10 years or 12 years or 20 years. So you have to decide, do you want short-term, intermediate, or long-term issues? What this product summary is telling us is that they have a mix of everything. As with other bond funds, one of the risks of the fund is that increases in interest rates may cause the price of the bonds in the portfolio to decrease. So what they're saying is, as the interest rates in our country go up, it might decrease the number or the amount of money in your, in your bond. Because the fund interests in all segments and maturities of the fixed income market, investors may consider the fund their core bond holding. In other words, there is still some risk, but there's not a lot of risk. Okay, so what are some of the facts that we need to look at? So notice here, asset class, this is an intermediate term bond. That means it's not long-term, so it's not gonna be like 10 years, but it's also not short-term, like a couple of months. This is kind of somewhere in the middle. The expense ratio is 15 or um, what is it, 15 hundredths of a percent. So it's very small. This is 80% lower than the average expense ratio of other funds. So this expense ratio is a lot less than other funds. Now, in order to be a part of this fund, you have to have at least $3,000. And that's about all we need from this section. So if you want to use the, if you want to buy into this fund, you have to start with three thousand or more dollars. Okay, our price yield. Let's go over here and take a look at this one. The price of this fund was ten dollars and thirty-five cents as of nine twenty two thousand eighteen. And what this was saying is they were growing by three percent. That means for every $100 that you invest, you will get $3 back, okay? If you are earning 3%, which this is, I'm rounding it to 3%. If you invest $10, like it says right here, you will get about 30 cents back. <laughs> you get 3%. Okay, so what is the risk potential? Well, notice that we have low risk at one, but then you don't get a very much of a reward versus more risk and more reward. Our risk potential with this Vanguard bond is about two, um, about a two. That's why this is only 3%. If it was less risk, it would be like one or 2%. 
If it was more risk, this would be like 10 or 20%. So if I had put in $100, I could get 20 back, but then I also could lo lose a lot of money. So this one has a pretty low risk potential. Okay, let's keep going. Now, how does this bond perform when compared to the average market? So is this bond better than the other bonds out there or less than the other bonds out there? So if we look at all the bonds, the total bond market is in the blue. That is for our Vanguard. So our Vanguard right here, our total bond market index, our Vanguard is this blue. The average is in this grayish brown color. It's called the benchmark. It's what we measure ourselves against. So notice that in every year, one year, two years, or three years, five years, 10 years, Notice that our Vanguard is doing just a little bit less than the benchmark. See the benchmark's a little bit taller and our Vanguard's just a little bit lower. Same here, it's not that much lower, but it's a little bit lower. Now let me explain why that might possibly happen. This could happen because our Vanguard is a bond, it's a fund, where we have to pay people to take care of our money. So that means that we will not get as much money in return because we're paying somebody, let me get rid of that. We are paying somebody to take care of our money for us. So that's why the blue is a little bit less than the brown. Now what's cool over here, this is hypothetical growth. So say I put $10,000 in in 2008. So notice that my line starts right about $10,000 back in 2008. Over time, if I had done that, my 10,000 would have grown to approximately, where's that night line? Notice that that line is at $14,000. So in 10 years, I would have made $4,000. That's actually a pretty good rate. Okay, and let's keep going a little bit down. Notice that when they type things in um, italics, it's usually just background information that we really don't need to have. Okay, our portfolio composition. How is our portfolio built? Composition means how it's built. So that means, U.S. government bonds, 64.6%. So about 65% of the bonds are in the U.S. government. That means the rest, which is about 35%, is in corporations. Over here, characteristics as of 8-31-2018, our fund total net assets. In other words, how much money is in this Vanguard fund overall? 199.4 billion dollars. That's how much money people have put into this Vanguard fund. 199.4 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. It's hard to even imagine. Now, how many different kinds of bonds does Vanguard buy? they have 8,486 different bonds. Most of them take eight years to mature, but on average, it takes about six years. And remember, there's that 3%. So remember back up here where it said, let me scroll, that this was an intermediate term bond? Remember I said it's not gonna be months and it's not gonna be decades, it's gonna be somewhere in between. So if we look down here, these bonds usually take about eight years to mature. Okay, at this point, let's go ahead and go to the questions. And I will take this moment to go ahead and help you read the questions, but you will have to answer and you can go back up to the, um, the fact sheet if you need to. 
Number one, what is the minimum investment for this fund? In other words, if you want to buy into this fund, how much money do you have to start with? Number two, what is one risk of investing in bond funds? I did read this up in the summary, so you can go back and check there. Number three, what is the level of risk in this investment? They had a chart for that. This question is the expense ratio of this bond fund, which is how much lower than the average expense ratio. So again, this was information up on the first sheet. And then what is the price? If I wanted to buy into this fund, how much is a bond? And what is the yield of this fund as of 9-20-2018? Then in number six, that spliced Barclays US Ag float. At, remember, this was what we compared our, this was our benchmark. The benchmark is the complete bond indexed against which this fund can be judged. Remember, we looked at the Vanguard compared to the benchmark. What is one reason the Vanguard fund, our blue, might be behind, consistently lagging? When you lag, it means you're behind. Why is the Vanguard lagging in comparison to the index, which is our benchmark? We talked about this a little bit. So make sure you read through it carefully. And then what is the current net value of this bond? In other words, how much money has been invested into this bond fund? Number eight, how many bonds are held in this fund? Number nine, if you invested $10,000 in 2008, how much would the bond be worth today, or sorry, in 2018? And then when we looked under the portfolio composition, how or what types of bonds does this fund hold? How much government bonds and how much was corporate bonds? If you need to, go back and check the document. Now, part two is a what did you learn? Use what you learned from analyzing the bond fund fact sheet to answer this question. Using information from the fact sheet, would you consider this bond fund to be a good investment choice? Explain why or why not. So you're gonna tell me, yes, this is a good bond fund or no, it's not a good bond fund for you. Make sure you give me two reasons why or two reasons why not. There is no right answer as far as yes or no, as long as you're able to give me two reasons for why you think this bond is a good bond for you or not a good bond for you. Okay, that's the end of this video. I'll see you later.